starting with photograph 67. So Jim, can you tell me who's in this photograph and what you're doing? Well, the two men uh, either side of me was two supervisors. They had a squad of men, but six men each. And uh, we're holding them up and we're deciding the route to take. And uh, one of the briefs we were told was um, you can use the forest roads and existing uh, paths right this right away. But you can come away from that, detour from that, if there's a feature. So this is for the, uh, sorry, uh, this is for the first incarnation of the Ulster Way. That's the old Ulster Way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, It's now all changed now, of course, but that was the old Ulster Way. Um, Our our brief was that, uh, actually, I was in charge at that time of of a body known as a rural improvement campaign. Right. And this was dealing with uneconomical forestry. Okay. See, and it was only for a short period of time. Uh, and one of the tasks that I got was this uh, um, to um, plan out the route between the Forest Drive and the Knockmore Road through Big, through Dugnafar Forest, Connor Forest, and uh, Big Dog Forest. And this was the first part of the Ulster Way? The very, that was the very first part to be cleared open. And it was officially. Uh, it was quite an occasion because even the, the under secretary, Mr. Dunn, mm-hmm. whether you remember him or not, he might be too young for it, but anyway, he, uh, he was to be there. Halfway on the road from Belfast to here, the police stopped him to say that uh, the Prime Minister had arrived in Stormit and he must go back. Right. So mm-hmm. that was that. So I, I missed all that, but I, I was in charge of actually the official opening. Okay. Uh, that took place in the what they called the Loaf Road, and uh, the rather strange the instructions I got: make sure you're room for six cars. I said, why six cars? Will you have the on the secretary, and then you'll have his um, bodyguard. Right. Okay. So I, I heard one of them I just fully put on their leg. Says you'll see a bulge below the left arm. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, the opening took part in a lovely dry day, mm-hmm. and the sun was shining. It was quite a crowd. This photograph that was when was that taken? That was taken in nineteen ninety five, I think it was. Nineteen seventy five. Seventy five. I think okay. it was seventy five. Was taken. The the the, the way actually was actually first opened in nineteen seventy six, okay. July nineteen seventy six. So it just took a year. To it, well, I was given. I was, t- I was given six months actually. My goodness. You know, well, maybe seven months. But uh, the the line managers called me in and said uh, this has to be ready for July. Right. And I says, so I, they said, yeah, can can you make it? So I will make it. And it was ready. Uh, it was opened in July. Uh, I, was, I was before me. Uh, I finished up before the the last date of completion. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And the other forester. I did the, the one through Ballon Temple to Hollywell uh, Road. Um, he was the, he was given the same instructions. And he has completed as well. Very good. So, uh, so. Mm-hmm. This photograph, where was it taken? This was taken at uh, Mina, a place called Mina Mina Loch in Loch Navarre. It's around the Forest Drive. It's a, a very famous fishing loch. There is some controversy about Mina Mina Loch. I maintain it's the source of the River Silas. Other maintains it's not a work. But um, I've been over the ground. The overflow from Minamine runs into the local work. Ah, so, so that's my argument. But yeah, some like learned men right. says it's not a work. But, uh, that's, that's their business. <laughs> and how long, can I ask, how long had you been a forester at this time? Oh, I was 42 years in forestry. 42 years? years. Uh, and when you actually d- did this project, had you been in a long time at that point? Well, then, uh, well um, I became, I got my certificate in, for- in forestry in 1960. And then that was in 75, that would have been many years, that 16 15, years, about yeah. that 15 years. Mm-hmm. And you trained in North Wales? North Wales. Two year course in North Wales, plus uh, six weeks in Pitlochry, in Scotland, the same course. So it was an interesting course, and you know, uh, three exams a year. 
three exams a year. Yes, I thought that was good. And uh, <laughs> uh, the the second year was um, at Easter. That was the call the mock finals, and I decided, you know, how you going to do in your finals. Uh, I'll never forget the chief of the case officer coming in. We're all called up to the senior lecture room. He says, 50% will fail. About maybe 25% might just scrape through, and the rest will get it. And I says, oh my goodness. But I, I think I'm in the 50% failure, but I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my story, you know. We had to spend a number of years as being a trainee. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so uh, I was very fortunate that uh, when I became a trainee, I was given the crown title of being a supervisor or a deep laborer, and I was put in charge of 15 men that had never worked in forestry before, and uh, that was a learning curve. And was your first job in Wales, or was your first job here? My well, first job was here. I started off as a, as a forest worker in Tardry, uh, outside Ballymena, uh, and uh, when I was given the opportunity then to do always work, that uh, broke me in, you know, as the saying is. And then uh, I had to go through uh, an exam uh, to be a trainee. So uh, after a couple of failures, I managed to go straight through. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then I had to do another issue for the school, the forestry school. Uh, I was told there was quite a large number had applied to the trainee scheme. Uh, it was a very good scheme because uh, um, you were paid your way to Wales. They paid the tuition and you were paid pocket money, two pounds a week. <laughs> and uh, you were paid your way home three times a year. Um, you were fed, as a man's fed, and, and uh, looked after that way. But the, uh, if you were a smoker or a drinker, you had to buy your two pounds. So, but uh, it was uh, it was interesting, to us, you know, that uh, the yeah. trainee, you know, that uh, someone I was told there was quite a number of apply for trainee, and then as out of that was like the twenty four for the school, for for the trainee scheme. Now the twenty four, then twelve was selected, then to the forestry school, six to Wales and six to Scotland. Quite so, a prestigious thing then. Uh, what well, a quite a procedure, yes, you know. Absolutely. Course, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So did you engage Dad for your future career then? Uh, that's the thing. Um, I remember the the top man from London. He was the um what they call the first what they call the English? Commissioner? No, what's what he's called. Well his own grand title anyway. And uh he gives a pep talk. He says, You're not here for a busman's holiday. That must be remembered. He says, you have 40 years of career ahead of you. So stick at it. <laughs> Way was very sharp. <laughs> <laughs> but that was it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But things have changed now. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the the new version of the Ulster Way that was opened in oh, 2009? Opened in 2009. Mm-hmm. I think that book, my book says, I, 2009. Uh-huh. Somebody caught a man called Chris Scott. He did a very good job now. He... he uh, but still, yeah. are parts of the route that you planned, is that still... It's still being used, not yeah. at all now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they decided not to uh, 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 go off the forest tracks, the forest roads. And mm-hmm. uh, um, Apparently this is for environmental reasons and safety reasons. They had to keep to the actual hardcore paths on forest roads. Mm-hmm. Which was a pity in one way, because... Some of these things that got my little portrait here of, of the photographs, uh, some will not be seen. Really. You know, yeah. it's a pity that because, yeah. but that's just the way things go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Photograph 35. So, Jim, can you tell me what we're looking at here? Oh, yes, this is the uh, we'll call it a fire tower home shelter. And you designed this? I designed this. <laughs> I wasn't in engineering skills, but I designed it anyway. Um, and weren't you inspired by... I was inspired by um, Bundorn. You know, the, the Bundorn, there's, uh, there's various shelters at various points, and they're like a, a cross. Uh-huh. Just matter what way the bin's blowing, you go to the shelter side. 
Um, my instructions was to erect a fire tower at uh, at Big Dog or Little Dog to control fires or, or, or fire you know fire watching, and uh, I was told uh, you know don't have the thing too close to the, the, too close to the ground up a few steps, and I suggested well why not make it up high enough for a shelter in below, and my nine manager said you proceed your plan, and that was it. So that was the results. Uh, and uh, so how, uh, it's how been very popular viewpoint. It's made out of concrete. The, oh, the well, concrete, part. concrete walls, mm-hmm. um, yeah. block walls, and then the tower. Because the tower now at this moment in time has disappeared, because uh, there's no need for towers anymore now. That many telephones in the country, and uh, in case of a fire can help spare various people. But, when, would it the have... was useful. Would it have been used just when there was a dry spell? Oh, a dry spell. The journey from what the uh, beginning of March up till maybe the, say the beginning of June. Right. Mm-hmm. And there uh, are dry days, and uh, the the first uh, communication was just a field telephone down to my office in a big dog, and then the, the next phase was uh, to be radio sets. And that was a big step forward. You yeah. know, and all these call signs, I had to teach the men how to use the call signs, but it was, was, was quite, uh, you know, was successful. And uh, people came from far and wide when seen this thing being built. Um, one can tell it, but um, no names mentioned, but uh, apparently the local plan officer wasn't pleased. Um, he made inquiries, he said to my one of my line managers, uh, what on earth is that on top of that mountain? He says, that's Sputnik <laughs> launching pad. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you see, the Crown at that time, they could do these things without any plan permission. They could build. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, it's different. Mm-hmm. But uh, they uh, must have made a good uh, excuse for having this. And, uh, and it's still there. there. You know, people still go to... Oh, they go there. Oh, they so go regularly. Was, uh, I was up myself there about a year, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, to see them, uh, I must say the Geo Park who took over all the recreation in the forest of Northern Ireland, or at least in Vermana, not Northern Ireland, uh, like myself there. Um, they they um, they they took over the upkeep and maintenance of all the paths and steps and things, mm-hmm. and uh, they put in new seats in the in this shelter. Yeah, in each in each corner, you know. And this photograph, when when was that taken? That was taken in 1969, that was before the Orsa Way opened. So it's lasted. So that's why I was able to, as I said before, you were able to come off a, written, a, a forest road or a path to, to a feature. Mm-hmm. And that was a feature. Yeah. And a very popular feature. Mm-hmm. So, and Jim, you were saying you, you gathered these photographs together as a lockdown project. Uh, yeah, yes, that was my idea. I took, you see, over the years, all these slides, I never thought they would be ever used again, but just for record purpose, for my own pleasure, you know. And uh, and then uh, I had them all indexed and, and then they placed by themselves mm-hmm. and, and, and a magazine. And then I decided that I would transfer them onto photographs and do this effort. You, you were know. telling me about Wilfred Capper as oh, well. Oh, yes, Wilfred Capper. Well, for cover, um, um, he was a civil servant, and he worked for the the, the at that time the Ministry of Education on the countryside. At that time, they had an input on the countryside, but he was a, a great outdoor man, great walker. He walked everywhere, and uh, Germany continent. But um, somebody called um, Tom Stevenson and made him over to see the pen anyway. And uh, so we went over, and he wasn't impressed with the scenery, funny enough. And he said that our country has the most nice scenery. He came home and he lobbied the authorities to this long distance way. That was in 1946. Mm-hmm. So it took from 1946 until the full growth of the ground, to the end of the 1970s, before, before it was launched. Took a while. Took a while. But he managed, and his idea was to have a walk Round Northern Ireland and ahead in every county. On the first. Turned on Belfast and went on Belfast. And the first part was in Vermont. The first part, yeah. the very first part, were very honoured. The very first part to be declared open uh, was in Vermont. 
Yeah. And I was involved in that big thing. So was other furniture as well. Mm-hmm. Quite a number of them. Actually, in this ever of mine, I have uh, even photographed the senior staff at that time and some of the workmen who was involved. Mm-hmm. I thought we used to have them because it was a historical occasion, no doubt. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. You know, so, Definitely. So great was, achievement. Mm-hmm. Great achievement. <laughs> um, so. What was I going to say to you? Um, did, that, the tower, was there more than one? Or did you build, was there one tower? Or did you build, was, was there a few oh, towers? Oh, there were various towers around the country. Various towers. Uh, Watch but that's towers. the one I was involved with. But there was, a, there was almost a tower in, in, in every forest. In fact, there was uh, two in Dublin Right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But they were built before, before this was built. Yes. And there was a couple in Ballon Temple. Uh, uh, there was, I think, there was one in Belmore. So there was quite a few around the country. And, and uh, the idea was that uh, they could pour out or donate the spot the fighters yes. one turn to another. You see, it was a bit like, you know, a bit like the army, you know. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, a bit like you do in America as well. Yeah. well that's towers, the same thing, they? you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, they're quite a lot of uh, fires, uh, you know, the fires were spot in good time. Mm-hmm. It was indeed. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. You don't, that's a turn of so, you know? Okay. But Wilfred Cover, you know, um, he came to see me and I brought him out to the Ulster Way. He said he wanted to do a wee test, which he'd done. And he says, what to see? And he was very pleased with the signage and very pleased with the way, the marking post, way mark post. Because you had to make sure that uh, if you were at a post, you could see the one in front and one behind. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, so, so, so there we are. So. Mm-hmm. Well, the next photograph we're going to look at is related to the fire tower. It's photograph 69. Oh, yes, this. Uh, <laughs> this one here. Yes. So, who's in this photograph? Well, these two men were under my control. And... Uh, they were to carry the stuff up the mountain to to build the fire tower. And one of them said to me, um, I have a donkey, he says. He says, you can have it, he says. Uh, and I says, fair enough, say, how much you charge? He says, a pound a week. So I says, okay, he says, bring them along. And say, don't overload them. No, no, I said, not do that, was his donkey. So the donkey was used to carry the uh, material up the mountain. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's him there, Neddy. Neddy, Neddy. Neddy the donkey. <laughs> yes, just uh, one donkey. But, uh, so, uh, well, it was environmentally friendly. Wasn't yes, it? Oh, very environmentally yeah, friendly. No red with that, you know. Mm-hmm. So this um, would have been. This was what year would have this no, well, have that, been? That was uh, well, that was before the trial, well, 1968 or 69, around that time. Uh, he was he was employed, and then. Uh, in the administration, you see, you had to fill in a, a weekly progress report. And one of the things was uh, hire of machinery or horses. And I had great leave putting down, hire one donkey <laughs> at one pound. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the right course in storm rate, I think. <laughs> I hope he got lots of carrots. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I wonder yes. what he spent his wages on. <laughs> I suppose the horses would have been more environmentally mm. friendly than the, the, the machinery on the Machinery, no, no, yes, uh, indeed. So, this next well, photograph. Well, Robert, uh, you know, he, 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 in those days, very few people would wear shorts, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm sure they must have been walking through the countryside. I'm sure he got a few comments, you know, this, this old man with grey hair with a pack of pack on him, you know. He had the shorts on. It's short, well, he's short on him all right, and it should be short, you know. And, um, but he, he was as brown as a berry when you were outside life. But, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, he was very appreciative of what we were doing. So I, I was glad to. Uh, uh, I took photographs that day, of course, at the opening. My wee, wee cheap camera. Um, there was no press there, funny enough. And uh, But anyway, um, I, I took Wilfred well to say the sign. Books for an Ulster Way, so I have a record there. Was it in the paper at all? Was it in oh, it was. Oh, yeah. yes. Um, uh, it was in the impartial reporter. Was it? Well, maybe but, you get uh, uh, John, maybe explain to you. Uh, I went to the impartial. I went to the library, and they very kindly allowed me to use their. We call that thing, you know, microfilm. microfilm. Mm-hmm. But and they allowed me to photograph it, but uh, oh. it's not as good as the original. Yeah. So I was hoping that somebody, as an impartial photo of me, 
would be really handy. Maybe allow us to photocopy the original because it's not very clear. Yeah, I'm bound to be in their archive somewhere, isn't it? Sorry. It's bound to be in their archive somewhere, the original. Mm-hmm. You'd think so. You'd yeah. think so. There yeah. was two. There was two. There were two articles in the Parker Reporter, oh. and uh, it, it even uh, showed. Uh, I think they even brought back uh, Dr. Sagan on a special journey to get photographs and the sign. You know. Well, maybe look into that for you. Sorry. Well, maybe look into that for you. I just said, oh, it's, oh, it's a good, it's a very good article now, and they, yeah. And you know, the Ulster way, um, it became popular in England. My daughter was working in uh, Preston, and uh, she came across this thing on the, what do you call it, the computer or something, yeah. about the Ulster way. It sent me a copy, mm-hmm. and they, they described the whole, the whole Ulster way, mm-hmm. you know, all the walks. We bit different, maybe, to what uh, uh, the original, you know, the original yeah. handout was yeah. higher, but they covered every 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 area of it, uh, and uh, the great phrase. That was in 1996, so it just shows it was very popular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was open in 76, and still in 1996, it was still popular in England. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it would be a, a lot, uh, wouldn't be as busy as a lot of the walking routes in England. Probably not, you see. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is this the original yeah. hand? Is this the original hand? You is see, yeah. the, yeah. the path that had to be, all your paths had to be called self maintaining you know, and there was hope then, you see, that so much people use it, it would keep the grass from growing. We we, we had to uh, cut the first crop of grass and the heather, and then that, uh, you know, and then not on, then was, was left alone. We hope that people would keep the grass from growing. So, so this photograph seven here, this, oh, yes, this is here. showing the construction of paths. Yes, for the that's what I see, you know, your, your local man, the local locality, you know, they're very useful people to have because they've experience of um, cutting turf, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for fuel, bringing it out through through uh, soft ground, mm-hmm. and uh, I put it to him. And one of the he was a supervisor. This chap, he he this idea of uh, branches, trees, and then uh, sods or turfs on top of that, mm-hmm. and make a path. And, uh, I don't know if it's still there or not, but I'm sure it still is, you know. So where was this photograph? Well, that's just at the viewpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if they still use that path here or not, because it be, wouldn't be off the beaten track. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so this was 1975? That was 1975, that yeah, was the year uh, before. That's right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm going to look at traditional farming techniques. Oh, yes. And here's mm-hmm. another donkey. This is well, photograph 41. T- t- to make the, the walk interesting, you know, people could could see how things was worked in the countryside. Now it's very important that you don't uh, get the idea that uh, we're back in the eighteenth, seventeenth century. <laughs> uh, well, this is nineteen seventy-six. Um, I it? photographed the the donkey because it was kind of traditional. Uh, this uh, farmer here, a neighbour of, of, of ours. He was putting farm fur- fur- manure out in the, in the fields, and, and then this other chap, he was planting potatoes, and just the traditional way. And I thought we'd better to record it, because someday that'll not be no longer done. Mm-hmm. You know, you, there's special spades used for, for planting potatoes, and some special spades used for cutting turf, and, mm-hmm. and, and the, the donkey was used then, you know. And of course, then I also photographed the, um, the, the, the machine for cutting turf, so... That kind of balance to our yeah. modern, you know. Yeah. So was this donkey, he had a a rope that he pulled. Oh yes, uh, they call it, I think they call them. I hope that's words right now. I'll take somebody from the country to tell you. I think it's pardons they call them. Mm-hmm. And it's just two panniers beside the donkey, and uh, you had to fill each one turn about. You see, because you fill the one, it would uh, oh yes, it of course, fall off. You see, and then you reach the field then. There was two strings attached to the bottom. He pulled those two or ropes, he pulled those two strings at the one time and the, the fertilizer fell down. And of the same those things were used for bringing out turf out yes. to a farmhouse or out to a tetra get to collect them. Bring out turf. They were the same idea. They were used and then that was the same thing that was used with the 
for the donkey bring up the material for the fire tower. The same idea, you know, both sides. But there's, there's, there's a special harness for them to hold the spent blocks. Yeah, heavier load. <laughs> <laughs> and in this photograph, photograph 42, it's a Fermanagh spade. Oh, it's a Fermanagh spade, oh, definite. So they what was different there. about a Fermanagh? Different Fermanagh spade for a spade. Uh, I'm from Peter Antrim and uh, my father, he never saw this kind of a spade, so I had to bring one home let him see it. Mm-hmm. And apparently all the neighbours from Peter Antrim or our house came to see this famous spade to the turn on. So what was special about it? Because the wee turn on it, there's a you no know, an angle on it. Right. And that's very important when you're um, when you set up these rigs or, or sets, mm-hmm. you know, the camera the beach. Whereas the airy spade using up would be straight. Right. It wouldn't be the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So is it better for clay soil? Oh, oh, clay soil or mossy soil it would still it would still be useful for both. Or right. would be all definite. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, when they're stripping the bulk bank, that speed would use that as well. We will strip the top of the bulk bank to make turf to get cut turf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does it shape the turf then? The oh no no, that, that's another thing. The, the spade for cutting turf is completely different. Right, or was that a, a completely uh, different? That has had a wing on it. We call it a wing, and that. Uh, it's a, that turf square then, you know, they're square, uh-huh. you know. So. Mm-hmm. And in this photograph, is he planting potatoes? Is that what's... I you know? see that if, if you put the fridge in first, mm-hmm. there's a certain width, and then the next thing you put down your potatoes, two rows, mm-hmm. and then the next operation then is to turn the soil over. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea is that uh, in Fermanagh, your soil is very shallow. So yeah. that means then you see you have the two sort of soils meet up and that's gives a bit of depth. Mm-hmm. You know, some great crops, you know, potatoes. Yeah. I did see myself like and then uh, there's you know, around the garden uh, up in the mountain. Mm-hmm. Pro great crop potatoes that way. Yeah, good going. Mm. Not great soil as you say. No, it's shallow, you know. Now, this is a great photograph here. Photograph fifty four. Oh yes. These two men look like they're having a great chat. A chat, that's right. So can well, you tell me about the, where this photograph was taken and who they were? Well, um, there's a bit of a secret to this now. <laughs> 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 the, this house actually wasn't on the Ulster Way, but what I did was I photographed some wall steads on the Ulster Way, and then I was uh, shown the, the, you know, the, the art of cornerstones and the art of making the lintel and it's on to sell. And then I went on then, I thought I'd better show what the inside would look like. And these two men, uh, they're both neighbours and there was a bit of a chat there. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the turf fire is there and the flame crook got it. And uh, they were having a great time chatting. I, I know them well, like they were, one was my uncle and the other was a neighbour man. Uh, both has passed away now because that was taken quite some time ago. I can't remember what date that was. Was it 1984? 84, aye, that's right. Yeah. So. And was uh, this, did you say this was near Garrison? Well, that was Tully Moor. It's a place called Tully Moor. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, road between Garrison, between Kilku Cross and Glen Cross. Mm-hmm. So. And that so fire the, there that the they've got. was Bower Robertson, the man holding the dog. I know there was uh, an uncle my wife's right. and they happened to visit and I was uh, he wanted to visit this man so I brought him up with him then the thought struck me that's a good opportunity to photograph inside of a traditional house that fire wouldn't have gone out no it? Uh, the fire never went out mm-hmm. it was um, it was raked at night the next morning then the, the, the ashes was uh, uh, put uh, separated and fresh off and on so that fire came and lit there for the last 50 years. Mm-hmm. That was the only source of heat for the house from then. Probably right? that was uh-huh. cooking and heating both. Cooking and heating both. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes, Very yes. important. And you right. took another photograph in that house of the dresser. Oh, the dresser. Oh, yes. That's, that's, that's the dresser. <laughs> um, that's where all the his, um, cups and saucers and plates and things was put on display. Um, and... Uh, you were saying something about if you were killing. Oh, yes, if you were visiting some of these houses and they asked you if you would take a cup of tea, you said you would. They went to the dresser and took every dish down and washed it in front of you. Is that and nice? I said to myself, oh, why that is. And it struck me. 
It caused open fire. There was ashes laying around. And uh, that was to make sure that uh, the prison was treated with respect. Mm-hmm. And that this is all washed in front of you, you know. Remember that as well. That's the last photograph. Photograph 58. Oh, yes. This one here? Yes. <laughs> no. This is a curious looking object. I'd, I hope there's no first scene men <laughs> at breakfast <laughs> with me. I would be in trouble, but that is known as a, a lot of board. Mm-hmm. And this, this and we're still this was used for for uh, for illegal fishing. It's very illegal. This mm-hmm. you you would be fined very heavily if you were caught using this. How did it work? Uh, apparently, the board was launched in the water, and a rope attached to it, plus a number of lines was contained the bait and fish hooks, and uh, apparently I was told anyway. That the, the person up there smoked along the shore of a big of a loch, uh, and he kept control of it. And then uh, he wanted to change direction. He gave it a tug, and it changed direction itself. Back then he got up and down the loch. Um, I was told that uh, if you were bad enough, you could clean the loch completely fresh. I couldn't. But um, uh, apparently, I was told that uh, people just use it just to catch some for their tea. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, because they didn't want to spoil it for the next man coming yeah. on themselves. So, yeah. You know, but this, uh, I'd already this would have taken. Uh, I promised the chap that he wouldn't name his name, and that uh, he wasn't using the name more, of course. But he didn't want it. And the specification they could see the landscape around it, so that's why it's behind a hedge here, right? So that nobody mm-hmm. can see where it is. So. When was this photograph this was taken? taken this, uh, this was taken in, uh, in 19 and... What's the dates on it there? Is it like it was 70, 76, is it? It was taken in 76, mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just thought I'd add that to it because uh, seeing so many locks, I thought it was, uh, you know, um, letting the, the, the people see like, what happened in the past. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, well... Yeah. I certainly have never seen uh, anything like but that. But they're before. very unique, you know. All the young people just know what that's for until they're told. 